What's going on, people? We're going live again on Monday morning. Uh, perhaps we'll be back to a regularly scheduled time slot by next week. But for now, we are back. Myself and Luke to recap Lost on Talking Lost. Uh, today's episode, we have we are talking about Season 1, Episode 9 or 10, uh, depending on how you count the pilot. Raised by another. Not only do we finally get to uh, see some backstory on Claire... And her origin as far as how she came to be on the island. But we also get probably the most supernatural episode or a spooky feeling episode, if you will. I think it's kind of perfect that we're recapping this episode only a few days before Halloween. Um, for perhaps probably the spookiest and scariest episode. Probably the most interesting um, cliffhanger also so far for any episode that we've got so far of the show. Luke, uh, you, ready? you ready to recap this? Yeah, I was surprised it took this long to get like a, a real cliffhanger type ending to an episode because i feel like that used to be such a standard for tv yeah at some point yes indeed yeah we're, we're, we're gonna break all of that down on today's episode of talking lost stay tuned Right, season one, episode ten, raised by another. So that this is the episode where we get Claire's backstory as well, and uh, what's it called. So obviously, like I said, we've talked a lot characters, backstories, all that good stuff. But I think what's probably the most interesting here is this is where we really start to get like into kind of I would say the next layer of loss. You know, we talked about that last week with Saeed's episode Solitary, and now that was a very crucially important episode as far as. That being the first one where we started to discover that they are not alone on the island. And this is the episode where it really starts to take effect. Where all at once, you when you think it's there's another spooky supernatural event that's happening just inside someone's head. In this case, the idea of Claire, who's having several nightmares about her unborn baby being attacked. And all kind of conjoins together with uh, the revelation at the end that somebody among the survivors may or may not be who they seem so before we get into that luke what did you think of the episode overall it was a good episode i could feel the just the the angst of the whole situation you're having a someone pregnant on the island that's a yes. that's a whole another problem they have to deal with uh on the backstory as well i just love seeing the backstory of all these characters yes. learning to know them uh you mentioned it's a spooky one uh with the dreams or are they dreams or is it uh a Stephen King type thing where the where the place has its own sentience and is, is playing on the on the vulnerable minds of the survivors. So uh yeah and and of course the ending, you know, uh, they kept showing that guy. I'm like, I haven't seen this guy before. Like, yeah. They keep showing him a lot. Well so he pops for, up for this being the, this being the character of Ethan who funnily enough actually I don't know if you recognize that actor if he looks familiar. That's William he, Mapather. Yeah so the, the the actor's name is William Mapather and while that name may not mean anything, the last I, name means something. The last name it does. It, he does. He's one Tom Cruise's cousin. So that's uh, and he's popped up in a couple things. I remember uh, the first time I saw this, I'm like, why does that guy look so familiar? And then I saw like a Watch Mojo video a couple weeks later, being like, oh, uh, with William Apathur and Tom Cruise, as far as like unlikely celebrity pairings or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I, I'm like, I didn't put the. I wouldn't have. It's one of those things where I wouldn't have put the connection together immediately but uh what once you pointed out it kind of makes sense and so ethan the character of ethan popped up only in last week's episode as part of uh as part of locks um as part of uh, par uh, uh like he was helping lock out with something and uh what's so interesting obviously about this episode as well is besides it being a claire backstory it's kind of a crucially important episode for hurley because Hurley kind of proves himself to be, like, the unknown, like, secret power player. Because even though Jack technically is filling out the leader role as the doctor taking care of everybody, um, obviously after Claire wakes up from the initial nightmare, um, the, it, it, as far as the events that set off the episode, it really is kind of Hurley that is the one that ends up, like, kind of carrying the trajectory of the plot, figuring things out, and by the end realizing that Ethan was not on, on the plane with them. And obviously, again, it, the, the reason why again, this is so important tying it with Saeed's journey from last episode and his interactions with Russo is because Russo, like I said, was the first confirmation. But Russo confirms that there are others on the island. And while, uh, what's it called? And, and, and while the others have become like a very significant part of lost lore, this is our first like 
evidence of seeing them. The idea of there are other people on this island that may or may not have infiltrated groups of people who have crash landed on the island before. For what pur for what sinister purposes will be revealed. But obviously, like I said, the episode kicks off with Claire having this awful, awful nightmare. She's wandering in the jungle. She's randomly not pregnant anymore. First, she runs into Locke, who gives this mysterious cryptic message. And when he looks up at her, he has this, the, the, mis these mysterious black and white stones for his eyes. Then she turns around when she hears Aaron uh, crying. And she goes up to find a crib in the woods. Uh, uncovers the blankets in it and sees nothing but a puddle of blood before waking up screaming uh, only to be comforted by Jack and Charlie and they're kind of trying to figure out like okay was she really was she really in danger um, is the island trying to warn her before there's a second nightmare in which she uh, thinks that she's being attacked and injected with something so um, yeah it's it's pr pretty freaky opening honestly to say the least it's it's it's, it's definitely hectic it's uh, it's scary it's embellishing because again uh, we've we kind of gone through every character up until this point, their flaws and everything, and we covered in the pilot as well how interesting it was that Lindelof was kind of had a lot of foresight in terms of bringing modern day 21st century struggles to being stranded on a desert island. Like, what would happen if you had if you were addicted to drugs and were stranded on a desert island? If you were paralyzed and on an island? If you were um, all of these different things? You know, if you had cancer, right? Going back to Rose and Bernard. Or just Rose, rather. And now it's a situation of where, what if you were pregnant? Specifically, very close to giving birth on a desert island. But what's even more interesting than that is probably of all of the character backstories we've gotten probably since Locke, Claire's is the first one since Locke's, I would say, that involves some supernatural stuff going on before she arrived on the island. Because the thing about, and, and the thing that I would say that differentiates it is that Locke, nothing, nothing mysterious or supernatural happened to him until he reached the island. Claire, there seems to be some supernatural things happening before she gets to the island, as we see in her backstory. But, Luke, let me ask you something. Before, obviously, the end of this episode, did you think that Claire was actually being attacked, or did you think that it was yet another one of the island's mysterious hijinks, you know, and messing around with that? Because we know that that wouldn't have been the first time that that had happened. I was, I was conflicted. Like, it could be either way, uh... I guess I don't know enough about the island to make a, a concrete judgment on that. I thought it may have been just, just like a freaky dream, but I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, it, then, it's always hard to say with the island. You know, like I said, with, but with all the crazy things that you don't know what's real or not, Jack seeing his dad, obviously, um, Locke mysteriously regaining his ability to walk and all that. But I guess also what's so freaky about this is up until this point, we haven't really had a confirmation, obviously, that anything on the island that we've been seeing is real. But now, obviously, with the revelation of Ethan being one of the others and who I, I don't I believe that that's who they start referring to them as in this season. What's, what's so scary is that uh, about the others, at least this early on in the show's run, is that really how they were kind of able to just really blend in with the island, where they knew the island so well that they're able to kind of come and go to the point where you may think that they're supernatural or not, you know? But it's really not until later on that you actually do get confirmation, no, they are real, and they have been living on this island for a very long time, so... That's that's kind of it. So as far as the rest of the plot goes, like I said, this ends up kind of being a pretty intricate plot where Jack isn't quite sure whether uh, whether Claire's telling the truth or not. Charlie, of course, who's who's head over heels, who's falling head over heels for her, is pretty obvious. He's trying to help her, but maybe getting a little bit too involved for his own good. Um, Hurley, however, of course, decides to go in the complete opposite direction, where he's like, look, where a where Claire's potential attack. Um, Causes him to go like, listen, uh, again, the unexpected voice of reason where he's like, listen, none of us really know each other that well. Um, so we should probably like take some sort of a census in order to figure out like if any of us are crazy, you know, he's like, um, and, and even points out, he's like, dude, my name's not even Hurley. It's Hugo Reyes, but that's just a nickname that kind of stuck, you know? So once again, kind of exploring these character dynamics. And I, I think the thing I love about this is that. Again, you one would be remiss to think of Hurley as anything other than like you know the funny best friend ultimately. But this is showing that like no, there's more to Hurley than meets the eye. He's actually wickedly smart, and as we'll see, it, it, it's it is quite interesting that the show deliberately waits until later on, almost to the end of the first season, before revealing Hugo's back, before revealing Hugo slash Hurley's backstory, as far as 
uh, as, as far as how he came to be on the island. But so he decides to go forward and take this census among the survivors. Um, what's it called? And meanwhile, we get a declares backstory, which so of course it's it's another classic case of unplanned pregnancy. But of co- and of course she's with the wrong guy. You know, uh, what's it called? Artist who is unsure of what to do. I, I don't know about you, Luke, but, like, every time a guy says, oh, well, these things always are, aren't always accurate about a pregnancy test, I'm always like, yeah, get get dump that guy. Get rid of him immediately. Yeah, just, just, just leave. Like Sorry, that. anybody who's dumb enough to actually say something like that is clearly not worthy of being with. But, um, so, so of course, he says that. Uh, Claire goes with her friend to, at first he's like all four, at first he's like all four, he's like, yeah, we can do it, we can actually like be adults and raise the kid, and then Claire my, goes, my paintings, you know, exactly, like, it's my, my paintings like, sure, so important, sure. it's like, all right, buddy, all right, um, so Claire goes with her friend to see a psychic, uh, who has a, has a reading that's apparently so overwhelming that it, that he causes, uh, that he asks her to leave, and he can't even take her money, he's like, he's like, please, leave. So she goes back. She's living with this guy. Of course, the guy has cold feet, ends up bouncing. Um, what's it called? Claire tries to go back to the psychic. The psychic uh, gives her a reading and tells her, but tells her that, um, what's it called? Under no circumstances can she give the baby away. She has to raise the baby. That's the big thing that's revealed here. And again, I'm, 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 I'm going to try and avoid stuff going forward, but... It's as the episode progresses, as far as how this flashback goes, it becomes beyond clear that the psychic foresaw her uh, crash landing on the island, ultimately. And um, what's it called? And as far as the show continuing to hint at the kind of overall presence of the island and what it's capable of, it really is almost like it is becoming like this living, breathing force almost, if you will. So what 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 did you what did you what was your take on on the psychics reading of Claire? Yeah, I'm I'm not one to really believe in psychics, uh, but hey, it's lost. I guess anything can happen or at least I don't know the the possibilities of what can happen. So yeah, I thought maybe it is the island sort of say reaching out, uh, extending its power on on people, sort of selecting Claire to to come to the island in in some way, so uh, I'm I'm wondering to see if if that aspect of the of the mythology is is developed further. It is it even. is rather it is rather curious as far as that goes, especially given obviously you know the revelation that happens at the end. But yeah, Damon Lindelof, that's a, that, psychics and and pe- really people's potential connection to uh the un, to the supernatural, the unknown, the 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 dead, what have you. Um, th- because that's another idea that he explores in his follow-up show, The Leftovers, where also the ability of not only psychics, but people's skepticism towards psychics and supernatural forces. Um, because obviously, like I said, we once again have Jack playing a little bit of the skeptic, where even though Jack has been one of the earliest people shown the, um, what's it called, who has been shown the power of the island, he has been kind of been want to reject it ultimately you know time and time again obviously while there are others like Locke who have embraced it but like i said i want to mention have... Locke real quick he has like, yes. like when it's not when it's not a Locke episode he has like two or three lines but they're the best lines of the whole episode and like harley asked him did you find it no it found me she's like oh yes yeah. that whole interaction I'm, I'm, was great and and I'm hurley's really and hurley's little reaction after he leaves he's like i know i already asked you about your information i'm just walking with you because i don't want to keep talking to him he's like that kind of creeped me out i thought that was really funny yeah, hurley's little interactions with everybody are quite informative obviously but yeah and the, the biggest thing too is that um he's like uh uh and he, when, when he asked hurley he's like uh so uh who's and who's uh who's keeping track of you and he's like me and he's like that was a joke he's like he's good i love Lo- how Locke just like is instantly a great judge of character it's great um so yeah so anyways uh so obviously claire is um so jack is trying to give uh claire medicine potentially because he thinks that the dreams are uh are a bit are anxiety based and that and especially because he doesn't want to potentially trigger an early labor which would not be a good idea on a desert island without proper medical equipment He's like, we want this birth to be as natural as possible. Um, Claire, of course, rejects it because in her mind, she's like, yeah, this is this is real. This is happening to me. Charlie, of course, believes her. She starts to leave the caves and head back towards the beach. Immediately starts contracting because, of course, this is what happens every single time you have a pregnant woman. Um, every single time you have a pregnant woman, 
and something you're like, okay, she will inevitably, especially this far along, I'm like, okay, she will inevitably give birth because there's always going to be a source of drama around when she gives birth. She's never going to be in the right time at the right place. And obviously it's going to create a lot of, you know, pandemonium and it works both dramatically. And it's one of those few story devices that works both dramatically and comedically. So meanwhile, we flash back again. Um, after the psychic tells Claire that she has to keep the baby, she attempts to put the baby up for adoption with who seem like a very nice couple that are going to pay her a lot of money. The only trade-off is that she'll never be able to see the baby again. And then what happens when she tries to go and sign the papers? The pens do not have ink in them. So, uh, Luke, how, how much are we reading into the, the pens not having ink? Is this, uh, is, is this the island messing, or is this just a classic case of every pen you try to write having no ink in it? Which is a very common thing that's happened to a lot of people before. But it is one of those interesting story elements where you point out, like, little micro things. It was like, oh, the pen not working every time you try to write it. The automatic door's not opening until you get, like, really, really close, if that, you know? And maybe pointing out that it may be, like, random acts of God. I know that Season 3 of Fargo was also trying to play around with this as well, but... What, what are we thinking? Do we do these pens just not have ink, or is this some more supernatural island spookiness happening? No, absolutely. Uh, if I do just call back to another Stephen King book, 11, 22, 63, uh, this guy has to try and save JFK uh, from being assassinated. And things are, on the day, things are being thrown in his way to try and stop him. Like, there's a car accident, there's a traffic jam. So just that that aspect of it, like ordinary, ordinary, everyday things, just stopping you from doing what you want to do when there's a, a greater force that's, that's keeping you from doing these things. So I think there's, there's definitely something there and it's not just a leaky pen. I, I, I rarely have a pen to pay along me. So, yeah, I've been having it happen a little bit more frequently, but I don't know, maybe the island's trying to reach out to me, but then, but I haven't been on a plane in a while, nor am I getting on a plane to go to a specific part of the world anyway. So I think I'm good there, but who knows? Maybe, maybe when I eventually go to Southeast Asia, you may never hear from me again. Who knows? But, um, yeah, so Obviously, we cut back to uh, Claire, Claire. Claire revisits the psychic, and the big thing that happens now, the big old uh, switcheroo, if you will, is the psychic gives Claire uh, a ticket to Australia, saying, "I found a lovely couple in Australia in uh, Los Angeles that's willing to adopt." Uh, your baby, here's $6,000, you'll get the other six when you hit LA, and it has to be on this flight, Oceanic Flight 815, and obviously, we know what happens next, but obviously, back on the island, Claire's uh, in the jungle, starts contracting, Charlie runs to try and get Jack, runs into Ethan, asks Ethan to go and get Jack, Ethan also appeared earlier in the episode when Hurley got his information, um, what's it called? Did he mistake his name for someone else, like well, Lance they, or yeah, something? They th yeah, they thought he was. They thought he was some somebody else. Um, which I which I thought was funny. And he's like, "Oh yeah, that that guy is, you know, the short guy with the red hair." And Ethan claims he's from Canada. He may very well have been from Canada uh, before he came to the island. But um, what was I just gonna say? But obviously, you know, back with Charlie and Claire. Claire starts contracting. She tells Charlie the story of everything that happened with the psychic. And that's when Charlie brings up the idea of maybe the psychic saw the island and he's like i he's like i do believe that some people have the gift and if they do um what's it called and if they and he's like and if they do he clearly knew it because if if he wanted um if, if he wanted you here and that's what the light bulb kind of goes on in claire's head the source for anxiety if you will but she's like oh my god he did see it he knew there never was a couple in los angeles like he did this to get me on this island to make sure that i would kind of be forced to raise the kid on his own which Oh, man, I don't know if you want to get into, like, the moral deliberations of psychics right now. If the idea of forcing uh, Claire to raise this kid was to make sure that she got stranded on a desert island, especially given that he had such a negative reaction and wasn't willing to uh, get, to tell her her reading in the first place. So I, I, I'm, I'm questioning the, the, the logic here a little bit. I, I don't know if that threw you off. For a bit, you know. Uh, I, I figured, okay, I just got to keep watching and see, see what the big reason is why she has to uh, raise this kid. So yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave that one to the future episodes. Yeah, that one, that yeah, that one, I'll have to leave to the rewatch as well once we get further along and figure out, obviously, um, what's it called, which, uh, wh wh whether or not it, it whether or not that kind of does add up and make sense or not. But so the the flashbacks get wrapped up. Claire's contractions seem to seem to stop, 
Everything seems to be back to normal with them. Her arc seems to be resolved. But, unfortunately, things get hairy as Hurley is directed to the Manifest by Boone and Shannon, who, of course, Sawyer has. And Hurley does a pretty good job of manipulating Sawyer into giving him the Manifest. Once again, really, this is low-key like a, like a Hurley episode, uh, 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 power player-wise, because he seamlessly manages to convince Sawyer to give him the Manifest by saying that he could really use the points right now. And... Uh, What's it called? Sawyer like easily gives him up, gives it up. Why? Why? He, why do you think he's just rela He's just relaxing on the yeah. beach. Sawyer's he like, I don't want any more trouble. You could, I, I don't actually stand to gain anything by having the manifest. I can clearly tell. Like you seem to actually have a legit reason. You know, you're not Jack or Kate, who I seem to have like, or Saeed, who I seem to have major problems with. You can take it. Go ahead. Saeed wanders out of the jungle. He makes it back to the caves. So with the bullet wound in his leg, Jack is treating him. Um, what's it called? Saeed is like. So, uh, what's it called? Saeed confirms his meeting with Russo and the confirmation that they're not alone on the island. And perfect timing, Hurley runs into the cave with the manifest, having compared his senses to the manifest. And he said that while there are only 46 names on the flight manifest, there's 47 names on his senses that he's taken of everybody on the island, revealing that, of course, one person was not on the plane and conveniently cut to Ethan greeting Charlie and Claire before the episode cuts to black. Yeah. Perfect. They, 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 they were showing him far too much for him to not imagine. Yes. I've seen enough TV. Like I've I've not yes. seen as much TV as you, but I've seen enough to know. To like, see I've seen enough and... to know the signs, if you will. Another another uh, potential supernatural movie that that questions whether or not the supernatural thing is real. Uh, but 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 one of the lesser Shyamalan endings. So man, so what our first true cliffhanger ending as far as going to lead directly into next week. All that I'm going to say is that, yeah, things are only getting started. We're, we're, we're past the build-up phase now. Now we're really getting into some of the island mysteries and some of the real juicy stuff, you know? So next week when we come back, it'll be another Jack backstory with, I believe, all the best cowboys have daddy issues. Um, what's it called? So we'll be doing that next week. Uh, no movie reviews this week. Uh, I saw Conclave this weekend. It was boring. It's not worth talking about. Boring. I saw Venom. It wasn't great. As yeah. expected. Yeah, it, it didn't look like it was going to be good. Uh, I'll watch but I finished that Arcane. Point. I finished Arcane. Oh, shit, so you're all caught up? It, it's like the best thing ever. It's right. the greatest thing ever, right? Yeah. You're all But you're all caught up for season two. That's good. That yeah. ending, man. Oh, boy. I, uh, that, was, that, was, that was a crazy ending, to say the least. And uh, I started yeah. watching Daredevil because I haven't seen it. And the new season. Yeah, March reboot, 4th, whatever it is, March is 4th, out, so. officially confirmed at New York Comic Con. So, yeah, we're only just getting started. Next week, like I said, we have all the best Cowboys have daddy issues. And as far as Oscar reviews, um, I believe so. A real pain drops, uh, goes wide next week. Are you guys getting that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, the Jesse. Eisenberg we get Anora in two Culkin. weeks. I'm okay, so, uh, all right. So at the very least, you know, we get your thoughts on that. We get it this week. Maybe oh shit, you're week. getting it this whatever. week. Nice, nice. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll see. It's within the two weeks. All right. Yeah. That'll be good. And then, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I believe the only movies that are coming out next week are Robert Zemeckis is here, uh, which looks interesting to say the least. It looks like his take on a on a Terrence Malick movie and Juror Number 2, the more than likely final film from Clint Eastwood. So I'll probably be recapping uh, both of those next week, but we'll get into some more juicy stuff the week after, uh, which is, I believe, when we get... Hold on. Let me check my schedule. Uh, the week after, oh, we also get uh, Blitz opening next weekend. Uh, that opens in theaters next weekend, and then the following weekend we'll get we'll talk about Arcane season two, and then the weekend after that, the weekend before Thanksgiving, it will be Amelia Perez and Heretic. But with all that being said, Luke, thank you once again for joining me for another episode of Talking Lost. Where can the good people follow you on the interwebs? You know, this week I'm gonna plug my Goodreads. Uh, uh, just to switch things up, it's Goodreads.com/slash/LucasML. Uh, so uh, you can check out what I'm reading there. Interesting. So is that, so is that like the letterbox for books? Yeah, pretty much. Nice, nice. I'll, I, I'm definitely gonna have. There's to a letterbox for everything. Too. There really is music, now. music, great. games. There really everything. is now. It's incredible. And of course, you guys can follow me with everything going on at Movie Nerd Reviews across all platforms at Official Talk TV Podcast across all platforms. Be sure to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitch. This episode will be available later today on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And as always, people, 12 seasons of a short film and watch more fucking movies. And in this case, Lost. We'll see you guys next week.